Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Count Cristo and this is the Royal Court in Mayo, not Mayo, in Taxes, in Crusader Kings 3. That's the game that we are playing. <laughs> and more specifically, this is the Royal Court of the Byzantine Empire. Ooh, I love that marble. Very nice. The grandeur is a little bit lower uh, than it's supposed to be, but it's moving up. It's currently... Oh no, sorry. It's currently 25 and it's trending towards 9. <laughs> That's not great. <laughs> so we, uh, yeah, we may want to uh, try and spend some more on that. But if you didn't watch my previous Royal Court playthrough, let me explain how this is going to work. Basically, in a moment I'm going to introduce our character, our dynasty, and our goals. And then I'm going to play off camera for a while until this character dies, or for some particularly big events. And uh, in which case I will resume recording and uh, let you know what's happened. So basically, you're going to get the Cliff Notes version of the story of House Criston. This is Christo of House Criston. You can see his noble crest, the purple representing the Roman, uh, Roman Empire which he leads, red representing the blood he will spill in order to rebuild its former glory, and the yellow to represent the rising sun the re-rising sun <laughs> of our beautiful nation. So this is House House Criston. Currently, we are the only member. It has one renown. It has no legacies, but what was will be. As our words dictate, we will restore this much diminished Roman Empire to its former glory. And Criston, sorry, Christo is the man to do it. He's a compassionate man. He cares about the people of what was once the Pax Romanum, and he wishes to embrace them back into his domain. He's a charismatic negotiator, quick, fecund, comely, and hale. Our uh, dynasty will have be seeded with fine genetics from the very beginning. He's also a bit of a comfort eater and a rakish chap. You need ways to deal with stress when you're trying to restore the one of the largest empires the world has ever seen. So, he's, he's truly terrible at prowess, and he's just, just dumb on learning. But on the other stats, he's, he's not terrible. So we're going to see what we can do. We're going to retake land. We're going to uh, probably reform orthodoxy, almost certainly. Probably split from, uh, from current orthodoxy, create a new Christian faith, all that. That'll be fun and cause chaos. And we're going to reform the Greek culture. I've looked, and actually, Byzantine traditions and Eastern Roman legacy, these are terrible. <laughs> So we genuinely start with like a bad culture that we need to reform and improve, which is going to be uh, it's going to be fun. And obviously we have the uh, the Ashari. I don't think I've ever heard of Ashariism, but uh, they don't like us. And you're oh, you're also Ashari. Where's uh yeah? Like, I really don't know what I'm on about, but Ibadi is over there. Okay. Okay. But, uh, yeah. They're going to be a problem. They're going to be... The, the, the green guys over here, the two two big green chappies, are going to be issues. But, I believe in us. I believe that we'll be able to take them on and restore the Roman Empire to glory. Wish me luck, and I'll see you when either this guy dies or something really major happens. Actually, on second thought, <laughs> I've recreated the same character, but let's not start as the Emperor. Let's start as Itty Bitty Little Count of Corinth and Mystria. And let's see if we can work our way up to Emperor and then restore the Roman Empire. Because I think that would be a bit more satisfying. So yeah, same start, but much weaker. Yet another small tweak. I started in the wrong era. We're back in 867 now. And we're finally actually getting started. Duke by 42. Not bad. And a king at aged 72. Not too bad. We are now... The mightiest vassal of the realm. We have a uh, fairly significant little little country going on here. We're also allied to like everybody, and uh, our wife has a claim on the Byzantine Empire, a pressed claim no less, which will be inherited by my son. So going pretty well. And there we go. At age, let me see, seventy-eight. I may not be the emperor, but my wife is. <laughs> Claimant demands accepted. Moments after, yes, we are unfortunately a known murderer because I murdered the previous Basilius and then used the chaos of the succession to push through my claimant's demands. But yes, general opinion is, is a little low. We are 78, so I don't imagine that's going to be a problem for very long. And now we just need to make sure that 
my wife dies, this guy becomes emperor, and then when we die, he's our heir. Which currently he's not. Because... Because... Uh, it's going to our... Son's son instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disinherit these two. So that it goes to the emperor. And then we will be able to play as the emperor. Glorious. Well, <laughs> this is a little awkward, but now my wife's dead. Okay, the memories remain. We get stressed. But also, I've got the pop-up saying uh, I'm about to die because I took the uh, the learning perk, Know Thyself, which honestly, I feel like this tree is almost compulsory. I'm still I'm still experimenting with uh, which ones which ones are useful. I was trying to get uh, divided attention, but anyway, um, so we're about to die. The Byzantine Emperor Empire, rather, which unfortunately now holds this land uh, directly instead of us holding it because uh, I gave this guy my son, liege, and friend. <laughs> um, this is how I, I want to be. But unfortunately, there isn't going to be a way for me to get to play as him because my player, uh, the son of my firstborn, has two siblings. And there's no way I'm going to be able to uh, disinherit four people, sorry, three people in the next, you know, six months. Um, so we're going to, instead, we're going to have to play as this guy. And then I guess, <laughs> I guess we're going to have to scheme as this guy to claim this throne again, which will be hard <laughs> because we'll be weaker than him. Um, and he's such a good, look at this beautiful bastard that we raised. But anyway, our wife is, uh, is tragically dead. I will marry someone new. Um, just for the sake of it, but anyway, yeah, so we lost, uh, we just lost all this land. I went on a holy war for Bulgaria, by the way, which we won, um, despite the fact that Sweden came and got involved, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. They're pinching some of our land and throwing it under the Byzantines. Maybe we'll be able to, um, maybe he'll grant us some of the vassals, but probably not because... Bulgaria is not de jour ours, and he only has, like, three titles, right? Four, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll die in a moment, and then we can see where we go from there. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I just got my... my Cat just gave me a huge health boost for five years. I wonder if that overrides the event saying that you're going to die. It might do, you know. It might. We'll see. God darn it! Despite the best efforts of our cat... We have died. <laughs> uh, we are now my despot. Michael! That's my name. <laughs> oh, and we're... What's this? We're bisexual. Cool. I didn't know... Uh, didn't notice that. Previous guy was heterosexual. Um, cool. So, we died. We were illustrious, faithful. We focused on stewardship. We had diplomat and whole of body. We fought in 27 wars. A bunch of them defensive. Founded a house and sadly drank ourselves to death. So, this guy is now my uncle? Yes, my uncle and liege. So, I think what we're going to do is go stewardship. We've already got it. <laughs> so, we can use the claim throne scheme against our liege. But the problem is, we now have 2,000 men. He's got a 4,000. Although, a bunch of his men will come, you know, from me. And do we have, we don't have a claim, do we? No. We have two alliances still, internally. Including with uh, Moessa up there, interestingly. So basically, this guy's goal is to consolidate a little bit. Make sure things are going okay on the court and all that. Maybe make some more alliances. The Anatolian duchy is pretty strong. And then we're going to try and claim the throne and, uh, and steal it for ourselves. We are unfortunately one-legged, but that's not actually that bad of a trait. We're not going to fight anyone, so... Doesn't lower our health. It's not like being one-legged is going to be congenital. This guy, uh, sorry, this guy, this girl, our wife, ah, uh, is gay, but has managed to have four kids with us regardless. Good. She's taking one for the team. We are deceitful, just, and con... Oh, hang on, does content mean we can't scheme? Please, no. Oh, okay, no, we still can. See, I mean, this is what we're going to have to do. Uh, we're content and just, which means we're going to get critical stress from trying to do it, but... We're still going to do it. Wish me luck. Oh, baby. <laughs> the claim throne went well, and uh, apparently 
Everyone, my uh, diplomatic overtures have worked. Everyone freaking loves me, which means, gimme. I don't know what this cannon stunned ultimatum two months thing is, because uh, I can just do it immediately. So maybe that's bugged. I'm not certain, but give me the throne. Bad move, uncle. By the way, as an aside, if you're ever sailing around here and uh, from Athens, which is just about here, you should definitely go here. Because you can sail through there on a really thin, narrow little strip of land, uh, of water rather, and there's very beautiful uh, shorefront on both sides. Oh yes, and also uh, we're about to win the war and become the emperor. And there we go on our second character in about the what seventy third year of the game, we are victorious. I am the Byzantine emperor. Let's go. Pretty nice, huh? Pretty nice. We did get a bunch of people got a hook on us. Oh, Christ. A lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people got a hooks on us. Uh, I guess that's because they supported me becoming the Vasilius. That's that's fair enough, honestly. Unfortunately, he has Constantinople, which is obviously uh, not going to stand. Apparently, he also has his wife in jail. That's interesting. We have an imprisonment reason, though, so we will... Uh, We'll move to claim Constantinople for ourselves and look at stabilizing internal politics. And then after that, it's probably time to uh, reunite the Orthodox speaking world, I think, as a, as a first step. We'll see what we can do to claim Wallachia and Bulgaria and uh, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, we're already 52, obviously. So, uh, you know, we're not going to have a super, super long reign, but hey pretty pleased with myself for managing to be an emperor in 73 years from a lowly count. Awesome. It's a sad end for my uncle. His titles revoked, his august emperor empire stricken from him. He's going in to the dungeon. Oh, well, maybe not actually, because it'll lose opinion, but he's going to stay in jail for indefinitely, basically. He got excommunicated, by the way, which had nothing to do with me, which made that process much easier. Well, tragically, uh, we did pretty well. We consolidated a little bit. We've uh, reunified some land up here. I have, uh, I've created some kingdoms so that the realm is easier to manage. Um, but unfortunately, both my sons died. <laughs> so we're going to be playing as a two-year-old. <laughs> Duke Michael II of Epirus is, uh, is the up-and-comer. Uh, the fact that our sons died seems to be a way to get around Confederate partition, though, which is interesting. Um, or is it because there's only one, I think, I think it is because our sons died. Like when you, when you are going to start playing as your grandson, it doesn't seem to hand out the title. So we're not actually going to lose any land. Also due to a weird inheritance thing, the Abbasids <laughs> gained Thrace, <laughs> which is obviously not superb. Um, but yeah, we are infirm and dying. Um, so sadly this rakish one-legged, uh, syphilitic ill infirm man is on the way out but that means we're going to be able to get a long long reign hopefully as michael the second the genius boy who will lead our lead our empire to greatness and there we go we are the three-year-old basilius michael the fifth of the byzantine empire uh, we have lost no titles on inheritance and our noble lineage 66 years 15 years hopefully not a trend that continues. He got to illustrious and faithful. We are an established, dutiful chap. Let's continue on. We did, unfortunately, have a terrible um, court physician, so that's going to be one of the things I'm going to replace early, but let's see. As a three-year-old, it's going to be interesting, and our heir is a woman, um, so we're going to need to try and stabilize things. Oh, dear. People are not fans of us. We will see what we can do. Part of that is because we hold three duchies, which is easily solved. But, oh baby, Let's see if we can stabilize this thing and grow the might of the Roman Empire. Oh baby, look at this absolute unit. <laughs> we have won three holy wars in the space of this man's childhood. He is a genius. He is a great eminence. He's curious. He's gregarious. He's diligent, and he is forgiving. This man is a legend. This man will forge a new Roman Empire all of his very own. And look at this internal consistency. There's one little bit of border gorgeous here, but look at that. 
Look at these neat borders. Look at these happy, powerful vassals. Look at all these happy vassals. Not a single vassal with a neg negative opinion of us. Vasilius, Michael, you are a man now. Heck yeah. This guy is awesome. Okay, he's not curious, but still. <laughs> he rules, and uh, yeah, things are going pretty well. It's finally time for us to find a wife and to start doing some lifestyle stuff, but oh baby, I feel good about Michael V. Just taking a moment here to uh, celebrate the victory of our first Great Holy War. Fantastic. Syria is mine. And also, look at this absolute god. <laughs> look at him. He is a beautiful, beautiful man, and I hope he reigns for another 40 years, but he probably won't. But yeah, you get wrecked, Abbasids. Eat it. My Syria. God be praised, the Patriarchate of Antioch is restored, and Syria is mine. I'd just like to briefly celebrate the fact that this guy is a freaking genius. <laughs> Look at this. We can discover this in 12 years, because from fascination, plus 127%, and he hasn't even got the scholar thing yet. Right, there we go. Scholar trait acquired. We are now at plus 136%. <laughs> Fantastic. We're also abandoning our legacy, by the way. You start out with Eastern Roman legacy and uh, Byzantine legacy, and we're just dumping both of them, because they do have some advantages, but they also have some really nasty disadvantages. So I'm just going to improve the culture, basically. All right, these, these two events go together really nicely. So I'll put this together. First off, a toast to the Pope's health. At which point the Pope dies. Cheers. And then, in just a wonderful turn of events in terms of timing, in one month's time, we win the Holy War for Jerusalem. Enforced demands. Nice. God be praised. And now... We can mend the Great Schism. <laughs> Who knew all mending the Great Schism needed was a good old bit of murdering the Pope. One God, one Church. I am now known as the Eucumenist. The Great Schism has been mended. The Universal Church has been restored. And, just to put the cake on top, my sushi has arrived. I will be back. Right, anyway. What does that actually do? We get more fervor, and it removes ecumenism. Is that all that it does? Oh, no, okay. <laughs> it most certainly is not all that it does. It also instantly converts a crap ton of the Catholics. Okay. But Catholicism, I mean, it does still exist. It's still an organized Christian faith. But we've crushed their fervor. And uh, the size of faith is also crushing it. And... We hold a bunch of their holy sites, so that's going to hurt them further. They do still have a pope, like it doesn't destroy the papacy or anything. Um, but we're also now hostile to them, so we're no longer um, we're no longer considering them just astray. They're they're fully hostile to us now because we've got rid of this. Except it hasn't actually. Probably on the monthly tick. Cool. All right. Orthodoxy. Nice. As you can see, the holy wars against the. Uh, the green lads to our east continue to go pretty well, which is uh, always a good time. And we are uh, nearly fully controlling the entire uh, de jure Byzantine Empire now, which is pretty nice. Also moving towards founding the uh, the Roman Empire. Getting pretty close now. Just got to take over a few more places over here. Our man continues to be an absolute god. He's got 64 learning. It's insane. <laughs> He's not even ill yet. Oh no, his health is poor. I am beginning to ail. We are 80, so that's kind of understandable. But look at this absolute beast of a man. I'm really not looking forward to playing starting as a 60-year-old, even with these great stats. But it's been good keeping him at court, though. He's uh, become a valued administrative courtier. But I'd love to just... Like, play as his son's son instead? <laughs> Could we just skip two generations? Because, yes, I am so old, and uh, I've been reigning for so long, I have great-grandchildren. Anyway, I will uh, I will get back to it and report in, probably tragically, to wish Michael goodbye. No! I will be dead within a year. You should get your affairs in order. Bollocks! Bollocks! We've had such a good run. He's 81. 
the legendary Basilius Michael V. Fortunately, due to good management, we're only going to lose five titles on succession, which is pretty nice. But uh, yeah, sad times, sad times. We are coming to the end of our life. I uh, I have like a minus 100 at war penalty with people. Yeah, offensive war minus 94. And yet still, just about everybody in the, in the uh, you know, not a, not a barons, but they don't count. The uh, major guys are uh, at plus 100. So they should hopefully like our son. It's unfortunate that we're, <laughs> we're inheriting as a 60 year old. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and he is a uh, he is a murderer. We have consecrated our uh, our bloodlines. So that's good. But yeah, we're inheriting a paranoid, wrathful, uh, yeah, forgiving sadist. But uh, he's not bad stats wise. He's pretty good. But um, yeah, I'd rather be playing as as my grandson or even my great grandson. <laughs> but oh well, oh well. Let's. Uh, Let's get on here. We're, we're obviously moving towards reforming the the Roman Empire. We need uh, Latium, Venice, Genoa, Capua, Romagna. But we're pretty close to those, honestly. Uh, obviously, we'll have to get back to living legend before we can uh, crank this out. But hopefully, we'll be able to do that in our next character. I don't know, though. He's he's already so old. And uh, I'm sure he's no, he's no living legend as is. But we'll see. And there he goes, my beautiful Michael, reigned for 78 years, and we inherit as Basilius Romanos of the Byzantine Empire. We have amazing stats, vassals, a little peeved, a little peeved, despite the plus 25%, sorry, 25 opinion from opinion of predecessor. Some of them, some of them are okay with us though. And yeah, we are down to seven holdings now. We did lose uh, Thessaly and its constituent counties to uh, our brother, but that's okay. I declared a couple of wars so we could get some easy prestige winning those. Um, looks like our army has got a little bit smaller, but not unmanageably so. Lifestyle so far, he's just taken, oh, what a freaking, you've just done nothing with your life. Your father, your father was a great man. All you've done is focus on the goddamn Sedusa path. You kidding me? Well, I'm going to take know thyself just so we know when we're going to die. Um, but really, I don't want this guy to survive very long. We have great inventory, by the way. I really like this weapon. It's very cool. But, uh, God, this I, I'm so disappointed in you, Romanos. <laughs> I'm basically just looking forward to dying again so that we can uh, we can play as this guy instead. Um, so to that end, I'm probably going to lead a bunch of armies around. We want we want to play as someone younger, basically. And when we inherit as this guy, honestly, I might do it again because I'd rather play as Thomas because I like uh, I really like it when you can start young and then kind of make it all the way through the life. But yeah, the empire's going really well. In case you're curious, by the way, this conquest in the north that's not me. That's Nikea and Georgia who are. Uh, adventuring around up there i'm focusing on pushing towards the uh the empire requirement stuff but uh yeah at least he's not stressed uh we are just faithful and established yeah this guy's not going to accomplish too much but uh that's okay we can keep the throne warm for our wonderful son once again back to the the name michael of course everyone with a michael you know is a uh, a great man truly but uh Holding pattern. Holding pattern life for now. <laughs> so I found a, uh, a surefire way to quickly kill yourself. Um, I'm sadistic, <laughs> which means when you release people from jail, you get stress. Um, but <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> so I instantly, I released 16 prisoners simultaneously. And the tooltip does not tell you <laughs> that this causes stress when you don't do it via the individual prisoner. So it instantly took me from zero to three levels of stress, and I immediately die. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> we are now more happy with our character, but that is very useful to know. If you do not like your sadist character, it is absolutely trivial to almost immediately get rid of them. <laughs> he reigned for two months. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, say hello to Michael, who uh, he's diligent, fickle, and impatient. I'm trying. To, I'm thinking now. How could I instantly kill him with stress? <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's uh, that's probably a good thing because the previous guy kind of sucked. <laughs> but that's pretty funny. <laughs> he let 16 people out of jail, and he was like, "I can't take this anymore," and just had a heart attack. <laughs> we died again. <laughs> We're 15. And we're kind of losing a tyranny war. So that's not superb. Remind me what happens if we actually lose this war. Oh, we're deposed. That's not great. <laughs> that's not great enough that I might go back in time a month. And then lose this war as my dying father. <laughs> okay, so you saw nothing. Here is what, what, what canonically happened. These guys are revolting, uh, lots and lots and lots of them, in order to try to install uh, the Duke of Tunis. However, <laughs> I denounced and then did a quick little war against the Duke of Tunis, my uncle. And uh, so, yes, here he is. We win, Duke of Tunis, now in my dungeon. So, you guys, revolting on behalf of this guy, huh? Well... How about instead, we publicly execute that guy? We are now a familial kinslayer. I've never seen that trait, actually. Oh, that looks really cool. Anyway, now, <laughs> we're like, oh, now it's just a war for the tyranny. I'm so sorry. I resign. And we surrender. Now we're playing as this guy, but we're not at war anymore. Next level plays. We are, however, a child, and our vassals, not so pleased with us. Not so pleased at all. And there's about a million different people with potential claims to the throne. But, notably, <laughs> not the previous ruler of Tunisia. So, now we pretty much just stand down the armies. Uh, welcome to the life of Thomas. No longer... Uh, this guy, Michael, who we probably shouldn't just let run around. So we should maybe uh, should maybe lock him up. We're also not betrothed. Okay, we still have money. Okay, okay. It's a little, a little frantic. Two deaths in like the last two years. Or, well, two inheritances in the last two years anyway. I've lowered the spending on the court. Desperately trying to save my income here. But oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's an interesting life in the Byzantine Empire. Uh, there is immediately a new faction to install this guy. Who is this? It's my vassal, Prince Artemios. Okay, well, they can send an ultimatum in six months. This is a problem. <laughs> Why are you in it? You like me. Well, we'll see what we can do about this. Oh, Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> we captured him. We just captured him in battle. The way I had to win that... Oh, sorry, I meant to be talking quietly. All right, all right. This is a quiet bit. It's a quiet little interlude. Because my wife is sleeping. <laughs> we managed to win that war by baiting them into sieging this mountain fort. And then hitting them from two sides. We win. You all go to jail. Get wrecked. Basilius forever. <laughs> it's Christo ASMR. Boom. Get imprisoned. You bastards. <laughs> okay, there it is. Literally the only thing left is to become a living legend. And then we can restore the Roman Empire. Ha ha, ha ha ha. The irrelevant, looks like rakish, lover's pox ridden, fornicating Pope with no land in Italy thinks he can come and take Jerusalem from me. Yeah, we'll see about that. And a couple of decades later, there we go. Finally a living legend. Byzantine 
antiquated, not antiquated, sorry, apocryphal name no more. We are now formally of the Roman Empire. We get the trait Augustus, which really seems quite weak. <laughs> oh, it's for all of them. Okay, it's not just because we founded it. Cool. You also get de jure all currently held empires. Hmm. Then theoretically, I suppose we should try and acquire more empires before we do it, but nope, too late. We are the glorious. Esto Perpetua. Heck yeah, buddy. Also, you know, hire people out. Cool. We made Rome. Oh, reclaim Rome. Restore Rome as the capital of the empire. Uh, no. That's fine. The capital in the east is, uh, is perfectly satisfactory. See, it's significantly higher development and all that, so... Disband the armies. Did we just gain more holdings? Oh, no, I just got some up here, I guess. Anyway, there you go. The Roman Empire is restored, and now I can finally sleep. Jesus Christ, 2 a.m. <laughs> I don't need sleep. I need Pax Imperium. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh... Gonna press on. We got some. We got some borders to restore tomorrow. I lied. Just one more thing, actually, before we round out today. It's a new empire. It's time for a new religion as well. Uh, so let's create a new Christian faith. Why don't we? This is orthology, like orthodoxy, but you know, slightly different. Our old faith will consider us hostile. We're gonna be a very similar color to orthodoxy on the map, just to kind of. Make things extra confusing, but oh yeah, more, even more imperial purple. Nice. So we are equal on gender. We are fundamentalists to convert people faster. We have a lay clergy and a temporal head of faith, a.k.a. moi. We have always allowed divorce. We get concubines, so we can do our, uh, what would you call it? Eugenics program more effectively. There are no such thing as bastards. You can marry your brothers and sisters. Deviancy is accepted. Male adultery is accepted. Female adultery is accepted. Witchcraft is accepted and kinslaying is accepted because who knows when we might want to dive into any of these. Either gender can be clerics. Clerical marriage is allowed and it is tempor temporal and irrevocable. I've also gone with astrology, esotericism, and the pentarchy. Esotericism because I really like the learning um, focus and astrology because it, we can do divine the stars and get bonuses on uh, lifestyle traits and then we're keeping the pentarchy i think because i go on a lot of pilgrimages and it will help us with um uh getting our fervor to stay high with all holy wars and stuff so yeah orthology boom 33 of 33 vassals will convert create look at that <laughs> okay well didn't spread quite as far as one might have hoped. Uh, and obviously Orthodox still exists in uh, France and things, but I'll just make religious wars all the easier. So, say hello to Orthology with a massive quantity of extra fervor because it's a tiny, tiny faith. And we better start uh, converting places at a, a healthy rate, huh? Obviously our subjects will work on that as well. And we have a whole bunch of uh, temples to give away as well. And while we're reforming things, let's change up our culture so Easter Roman legacy gives us lower levy size and lower levy reinforcement rate I used to think that was a problem but actually I think we're going to keep it for now because our levies are you know fine so let's just add a new thing as well castles keepers could look tempting because it adds renown from castle holdings but it's a very small amount of renown it's like 0.1 per castle holding I'm tempted to go with um, collective lands just for the 20% development growth. Which seems fun, right? The other option is... Uh, not equitable. Has it gone full bearing? Just for less stress gain. Loyal subjects for plus 10 opinion of liege. I think we're going to go with loyal subjects just because our last inheritance was murderous. And if everyone was a bit happier with us, it would be easier. So we're going to go with loyal subjects and establish that. It takes 30 years to establish, and then you have to wait 50 years to establish a new one. But we have uh, yeah, a few more to be added that we will uh, keep working on. Speaking of which, by the way, welcome to the high medieval era. We recently made it. We're going for heraldry, so we can get high partition law passed, which will be good. And also, while we're changing things up, we're on high clan authority. 
will be going up to Absolute soon, so we can designate an heir, which will be fun. Never been on uh, Absolute Crown Authority. And our vassals still love the heck out of us. So, yeah. Let's start as we mean to go on here and uh, take some concubines. No one looking good at the moment. I may have to go and break some betrothals. Anyway, I will see you when the next event takes place. <laughs> The peasants are a little bit unhappy about me converting to a new religion. <laughs> Holy Christ. There's uh there's quite a few of them. <laughs> uh, shouldn't be a problem, but that's a problem. I think every time they win a siege they get more men as well. <laughs> oh, and there we go. I have now demanded manually every single count and above vassal in the whole realm. To change their religion <laughs> which should help with the spread of uh, orthologists across the land I've also decided that I think the best way to uh, beat this rebellion is to go after its leader who happens to be in this army I think if I capture him I can get all the other you know 114,000 peasants to stand down oh sweet Jesus okay <laughs> I think we finished them off after getting 235% war score from battles. I believe this is their final 500. <laughs> That's 100,000 dead peasants. And as you can see, orthologist spreading nicely. That's why you manually convert the counts. That's a crap ton of corp chaplains working away at getting everything converted. Also, just interesting fact, Greco-Bulgarian has formed in the north, which is interesting. Generally, I'm not sure how I feel about how culture relates to technology because you want to keep your culture as little spread as possible in order to get the best out of your more developed lands which is why i've manually spread it to these really high development lands over here but uh i'm not sure how i feel about that it's a bit weird right having to wanting to restrict how far you spread your culture i feel like maybe i don't know i don't know another way to do it with the uh, cultural fascination but yeah anyway Finish off these rebels and get back to the process of growing the empire. Ah, tragically, it comes to this. Know thyself. We are close to the end. Pause, 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 pause. <laughs> we are also, I think, close to the end of this series. I think it's time to put it to rest. Restoring the rest of the Roman borders would obviously be trivial. We are, uh, I can <clears throat> declare duchy wars at no cost and then my rulers are so diplomatic they can persuade people to repeatedly murder their kings so there's no such thing as truces and then we just take more land so i think we're probably gonna call it here let's have a look at our final character patriarch thomas the glorious reformer of the roman empire founder of the orthologist faith which now has 100 percent dominance within our land we have retaken all of egypt most of tunisia and we're working on uh, on continuing to expand in that direction this beautiful man is an astute intellectual a scholar a wise man he has been driving our technological progress forwards he is also an aspiring blade master a hunter a legendary reveler this man knows how to have fun he's also of course a pilgrim of consecrated blood an augustus ruler he is the ruler of the restored roman empire he is of course also fecund and robust and uh, he has three concubines, including our heir, <laughs> our player heir, daughter and woman, also our woman, and also our granddaughter, great-granddaughter and concubine, because, you know, it's CK3. Also, our wife is also our great-granddaughter, because, you know, naturally. No one in House Christo, of which, by the way, there are 487 living members and 18 houses. As far as I know, let me check here. There are only six members of the family that are currently inbred, which is pretty impressive because we have been inbreeding to truly absurd degrees. <laughs> when you sh when you see things saying like granddaughter and great granddaughter and wife, you know stuff's <laughs> stuff's gone wrong. We have, uh, as usual, some truly insane stats: twenty six diplomacy, twenty six martial, twenty five stewardship, twenty nine intrigue, and sixty three learning with 33 prowess. This man is a god. His health, poor, but, ah, uh, oh, damn, if I just got rid of a beast faster, we might, have, uh, we might have lived a bit longer, but he is 93, a respectable age in the modern era. 
But yeah, we're allied to West Francia and some other irrelevant people. We've got 40,000 men under arms. We are, of course, religious icon, living legend, have been for decades and decades. Very low dread. We don't really need any dread because pretty much 100% of our vassals have 100 opinion of us. It's not quite 100%. There's like three or four that don't, but they absolutely freaking love us. We uh, don't have a chancellor right now. Whoops. Look at those stats on this. We've got a obviously a 33 from our court chaplain. Wonderful stuff. We have successfully converted a little bit more of uh, of Italy here to Greek. Though, oh, darn. Sicily. <laughs> Sicily, this one was also Greek, but they actually converted it back. And all that was, of course, in aid of driving forward the technological advancement of the... Uh, the Greek culture, which has been going pretty well. The fact that we've got heraldry means that we can combine absolute crown authority and house seniority. And when you have house seniority, all the land goes to one person. And when you designate an heir, that person becomes your primary heir, which means it just totally ignores house seniority, which means we can select any of our children to be our heir. And because we are a prodigious man with 16 children, that means we still have plenty of young options to choose from. Our heir, by the way, look at this wonderful lady. She's got comely, genius, robust for guns. She is a heck of a character. She's already got like <laughs> practically 70 combined stats. So would have had a good time as her. But I think we're going to take a pause and take a trip back home for me. I think we're going to go and play in the United Kingdom. I think the idea for the next campaign will be we start in Ireland, take over the United Kingdom, and then we try and install our, um, our dynasty on all of the crowns of Europe. I think that would be fun, while never holding land outside of England ourselves. I think that would be enjoyable, and we could try and you know crank our renown growth, basically. But anyway, we did do one final uh, cultural... Uh, Reformation, we've got loyal subjects established, which will be useful. And the next one I was thinking of adding was, um, where is it? Mendicant, 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 don't know this word, mystics, because mystics are uh, virtuous to our religion and already give additional bonuses. So if we have it being more common and more additional bonuses, that's so much the better. Are we... Uh, yeah, we could do... I mean, maybe I should have done more hybrid culture stuff. I don't know. It seems like it causes problems, but one of the good things about hybrid cultures, just to demonstrate... Like, let's say we did a hybrid culture with um, Bulgarians. We make Bulgaro Greek, and you do this. You notice that the culture only stays in, like, your core territory of the Greek region. And if we overlay that with the development map, you will notice that the average development of our culture has just gone up dramatically. So we would now be able to uh, get this stuff way faster. I mean, look at that. The average development is now giving us a 0.5. It's way higher. It was like 0.25 a second ago. So I think using hybrid cultures tactically in order to shrink the area that's actually your culture and thereby get more, um, get smaller land, I think is going to be useful. We're going to try and use that basically to, I think, shrink down our culture as small as possible in the next series but yeah that is look at that culture that uh, development map mode by the way i haven't even been driving development in the capital with my chancellor it's just growing naturally because we stacked up stuff look at that <laughs> plus 1.2 culture per month without even having the counselor in place pretty darn good all right well, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you ever so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the campaign and our glorious Roman restoration. We're not going to let Thomas die. Thomas, the, the vigilant, friendly council, sound foundations, confidant, genius man with his six friends and his 16 children and his 45 vassals, all of whom adore him. He's going to live forever because we're ending here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the series. There is a link in the description if you want to click that. Then you get... And if you buy any Paradox games, then it gives me a little kickback, which is always nice. And you get uh, you get Steam codes from the purchases, so don't worry about dividing your collection. If you click the link now, then any purchase you make in the next 30 days, I get credited for. So you might as well. No pressure, obviously. But either way, I will see you in the next series for a little go at Ireland. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>